I'm Nintendo. And I'm Sega. This is Console Wars! Hey, check it out, the new batch of shirts came in. Hey, looking good. Man, our logo is sharp. I know. I sure hope no one steals it. <laughs> Who would do that? Anyways, I got something pretty awesome too. Did you get the Gene Simmons boots? Even better, I got an ultra rare Blu-ray of Batman Forever. Oh, okay. <gasps> I don't think you understand just how awesome this is. This baby is loaded with never-before-seen deleted scenes. Eh. Uh, it's rated X. I'm in. Yeah, Alright, let's check out some scenes. Oh, I'm way ahead of you. Ooh, let's check out this one. I can't do it. I can't beat Riddler and Two-Face on my own. I need help. I need a partner. Not just a partner. A friend. Clark, thank God. I thought I was going to have to use that circus orphan I bought. <laughs> no need for that, because I actually exist in this universe. This is true. I have mentioned Metropolis. Okay, so I'll go take those guys out and get some lunch. Copy that. Away! That was awesome. Not bad. Let's watch another one. Ah, oh, we can't take it anymore. It's driving us insane. Ew! I saw Glum Chum. The bat got you down. No, not the bat. This magic guy. I can't see anything. Well, maybe the two of you just need to relax your eyes. <gasps> we are relaxed. Or maybe you can just keep doing what you're doing. Woo! Sailboat. Uh, that was a little weird. Yeah. Hey, this one looks a little more action-oriented. I see Batman. All right. What are you going to do? Time to do a coin and flip it to see if I'm lucky? No, sir. We're going to a pee on you. That's not your style, Harvey. Well, we're gonna do it a twice! <laughs> uh, riddle me this, or riddle me a piss. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good cut. That got weird. What's still going on? Now they're both doing it, and now they're crossing the streams. Dude, an unreleased Weird Al parody of Kiss from a Rose. Ooh. Baby, heck you know I got a piss on you, Rosemary Kiss. Ooh, I eat asparagus, the stranger my people smell. Because the more I drink tea, the more I can't be on their face. That's a little off-brand for him. It's not even about food. I guess it goes with that deleted scene, though. Mm. Let's check out one more. <sighs> Are we evil? I mean, we did kill a lot of people. Yeah, but I feel like that's kind of more bad than evil. I feel like we need to... We need to start eating people. Start? This is a family four from Central City! <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Good cut. I know. Jim Carrey does not look good there. Yeah. Oh, check it out. Deleted scenes from the Batman Forever video game. The video game? Wow. I mean, talk about a bad game. For the Sega Genesis. No way. It's much worse. For the Super Nintendo. That's it. Are we doing this? Does the Riddler's jacket keep him safe while he's jogging at night? Worst, Worst Batman Forever game. Batman Forever was released in 1995. With director Joel Schumacher leading an all-star cast and a solid soundtrack, the film became the sixth highest grossing movie of the year. And this film had all sorts of merchandising. Remember these collectible McDonald's mugs? But what we're looking at today are the Batman Forever video games. Batman Forever was released for the Game Boy, Game Gear, PC, and R-Zone. This weird thing that existed once 
The versions we're looking at today are Batman Forever for the Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis, both developed by Probe Entertainment. Both games are infamously bad. Which one's worse? Let's find out. These games have a lot of the same terrible graphics. Both games have real digitized characters, just like the early Mortal Kombat games. I guess characters look okay. Everyone looks like they did in the movie. Everyone but Robin for some reason. He looks more like something from the Adam West era. Character animation is... okay. As smooth as digitized characters can be. This looks pretty decent. The box boasts over 125 awesome moves, gadgets, and attacks. So that's cool, I guess. Backgrounds are also boasted to be digitized, and for the most part, they're levels from the movie. We got Arkham, the Bank, the Circus, Two Faces Lair, the Batcave, Riddler's Island, the Ballroom, and the train station, which was kind of in the movie. But no neon street level. What a bummer. Yeah, not great looking games. No, but my game definitely looks worse. When you look at the games side by side, the Super Nintendo game looks more crisp. The Sega game looks grainy and pixelated. The Super Nintendo game looks nice and smooth. I mean, check out this power up on Sega. What is it? I can't tell. Now look at it on Super Nintendo. Oh, it's Two Faces coin because now I can actually see the scratches. And the colors are more muted on Super Nintendo too. This makes it a little easier on the eyes and gives it an overall better look. My game definitely looks worse. As some other times, my game's cropped. The Super Nintendo game is cropped compared to Sega. Makes it harder to see the platforms, hidden areas, and enemies. Talk about a win for the Sega game. Well, the Sega game is missing things compared to Super Nintendo. Check out this level. Nice and foggy on Super Nintendo. And on Sega, no fog. Same thing happens on this stage as well. And check out this ride around Gotham. On Super Nintendo, you can see the moon and stars behind the buildings. On Sega, nothing, just buildings. The Super Nintendo game also has more objects in the foreground. The pillars in this bank aren't on Sega. The various objects in the Super Nintendo Circus aren't in the Sega game either. And check out Chase Meridian here. You see her the whole time during the boss fight on Super Nintendo. And on Sega, she only shows up at the very end. The Super Nintendo just has so much more in every level. My stages look worse. But it looks like the Sega game originally had an exclusive level. You can see it in this deleted scene. It was in the movie. My graphics are worse. For having less crisp graphics, worse use of color, and many objects missing, worst graphics goes to Sega Genesis. Now our presentations are very different. Yes, mine is much worse. Let's start with the HUD. The HUD on Super Nintendo looks fine. You see your hero's name and health, and the enemy's name too. Nothing special. But now look at the Sega. Instead of their names, Batman and Robin have their symbols with a much more stylized health bar. You have a much cooler HUD on Sega. The HUD's not that great. Look at the actual life bar. On Sega, your life is pink while the background is red. What a terrible idea. You really have to stare at it long to figure out where anyone's life is. And then you have the good old life bar on Super Nintendo. Red life over a black background. No confusion there. And when there's a timer on screen, it's in the Super Nintendo HUD. On Sega, it's just on the bottom right. You like easy on the eyes? You got it! Look at the life bar on the Sega during versus mode. One for each player. Clean. Now, look at it for Super Nintendo. Each player gets two life bars, yours and your enemies. Even though your enemy clearly has a life bar, they weren't sure you'd see it. So they put it under your life bar too. So you get two life bars. What a good decision! I have another reason my presentation is worse. Let's look at the score tally. Check out the score tally on Sega. You have this cool bat logo and the question mark. Stylish. Then look at the Super Nintendo game. No logos at all, just text. Boring, boring text. You want to talk about boring text? Fine. The text when I get a riddle on Sega is pretty bare bones. It looks much classier on Super Nintendo. Like anybody ever reads those. Well, you do have something cool that I don't. Whenever you go into a new room on Super Nintendo, there's a transition in the shape of a bat symbol. See? And it changes throughout the game. It can be Two Faces Yin Yang, or even the Riddler's question mark. The Sega game has none of these cool transitions. And overall, the Sega's presentation is much more boring. 
let's just look at the cutscenes. Before a new level, the Sega game has a quick shot of Gotham, and then a whole lot of text. Now check out Super Nintendo. You get an awesome cutscene of Batman actually driving through Gotham, and you see his or Robin's face in the reflection. You even see the reflection when they're just selecting weapons. There's no reflections on Sega. Also, when you select Batman or Robin on Super Nintendo, they roll. On Sega, they don't. A roll. A grid. It's not that much. Well, it's a lot better than what I got. Let's take a look at those intros. The Sega intro is just this. Batman Forever. Okay? Now check out what happens on Super Nintendo. Whoa! It's just like the movie! Well, it looks like the Sega game had something a little similar. Holy rusted metal, another deleted scene! It's a good cut. Let's compare the endings. Here's the Super Nintendo ending. You get another one of those cool cutscenes through Gotham, and then you get some text to wrap up the story. You know what happens on Sega? That's it. Then the credits. Talk about lazy. Oh, my game is plenty lazy. After the ending on the Super Nintendo, you see the cast and credits. Makes sense. But for some reason, they also put that after the intro, too. Why? I guess they realized no one would play this game, so they decided to show the credits before you even played. I think my credits are funnier. Look how slow the Super Nintendo credits go. Typical credit speed. Now check out Sega. That's a lot faster. It's almost like they were so embarrassed with the final product, they didn't want you to know who worked on the game. And with that, my presentation's worse. For having terrible color choices for the life bar, boring text for the riddles, no cool cutscenes, boring intro, and even more boring ending, worst presentation goes to Sega Genesis. <laughs> Well, no music from the movie in either game. No. At least our games have the same songs. instrumentation on the Super Nintendo. It just sounds so hollow. It sounds so much more crisp in your game. Well, how's about this little detail? How's about the fact that Tim and Jeff Fallen both get credit for the Super Nintendo music, but on Sega, only Tim Fallen gets credited. That's only half the Fallen. Your music's clearly better, or your game's not as rude. Well, they're not amazing soundtracks by any means, but it's how you use it. And your game has way more music than mine. Both games have the same music during the normal game mode. However, during training mode, the Super Nintendo game has no music. For all three training modes, no music. Why? The Sega game has music. For all three training modes. I guess that's because sound is better on Sega. Well, if that didn't convince you, let's talk about sound effects, particularly voiceovers. Listen to these voiceovers on Sega. You got the Riddler. And you have Two-Face. If the bat wants to play, we'll play. Right out of the movie. And now listen to them on the Super Nintendo. That's right. The Super Nintendo game doesn't have those voiceovers. Yeah, but my voiceovers are so distorted. What? Those sound so clear. Like I'm watching the actual movie. Ooh, that looked painful to say. It was. But your game does have a lot more voiceovers. When enemies beat you on Sega, there's voiceovers. 
It's mostly grunts or laughter, but at least it's something. <laughs> and one of them talks. Get about it. It adds a little charm to the Sega game. And what do enemies say when they beat you on Super Nintendo? Nothing. Yeah, but it's so lame what he says. Forgot about it. Really? That's still better than what they were gonna do on Super Nintendo, though. Ooh, another deleted scene. Did I do that? You got it, dude. Uh? I guess it could have been worse. Easy win for Super Nintendo. For missing music for all the training modes and not having any voiceovers, worst sound goes to Super Nintendo. We both have the same horrible gameplay. Both games have you play as Batman or Robin. They basically play as 2D beat-em-ups with fight game mechanics. The buttons are high punch, low punch, high kick, low kick, block, and grappling gun. If you jump to some platforms, you do a sweet flip, and you can also glide when you jump. You also have various gadgets at your disposal. You can even find blueprints to get even more. The gadgets do change depending on if you pick Batman or Robin. To use a gadget, you have to input a move like in a fighting game. They're not always easy to execute. Both games are made up of eight stages. There are secret areas, which does allow for some exploration. Both games start you off with six lives. You can find more lives, but there are no continues. No password or save either, so you've got to beat the game in one shot. You can play one player, two player cooperative, or two player competitive. In cooperative, you can't hurt each other and you share a number of lives. In competitive, you can hurt each other and you have your own number of lives. There's also an exercise mode. Here, you can practice your skills as Batman, Robin, or even play as some of the villains. There are three of these modes. One player mode lets you fight two opponents at once. If you win, the difficulty is raised. Then there's two player co-op. Here, you and a friend fight two opponents together. Victory here also increases the difficulty. Player vs. Player is pretty much what you think it is. You and your friend fight each other. There is a lot going on in these games, and they have a lot of problems. Right, and my gameplay is definitely worse. Let's go to the grappling gun. The grappling gun is notoriously bad in these games. To grapple straight up, you need to hit up immediately after hitting the grapple button, or else you'll grapple at an angle. It's even worse on Super Nintendo since Select is the grapple button. Select? Really? Sega manages to fit all their controls into six buttons. Why couldn't Super Nintendo? You know where they could have assigned that? The R button. The R button just lets you go to lower levels and back attack. They could have had it be your grapple instead. I'm just saying, the Sega game got all the controls into six buttons. While the Super Nintendo, for some reason, needed seven. So your grappling isn't perfect. Now my combat, that's bad. Combat isn't great in either game, but I'm pretty sure it's broken on Sega. Check out this exciting fight against Two-Face. Yeah. Or check it out when it happens during the end of the game. This game's broken, right? It's pretty broken on Super Nintendo too. I can't do the kick thing, but a lot of times I can just stand there punching and enemies will walk right into it. My other controls are bad too. The gadgets are a bit difficult to execute in both games. The controls are anything but tight. It really feels like luck when you pull off any move. Having said that, the controls are much worse on Super Nintendo. Just look at throwing a battering. On Super Nintendo, if you do it too fast, it doesn't work. It only works if there's a slight pause between the buttons. I mean, look how slow you can be to pull off a move. What kind of nonsense is that? Like I'm gonna take my time fighting enemies just to throw a weak weapon. The Sega controls, on the other hand, play a lot more like you'd expect. They're much more responsive. You don't need to slow down in order to pull off a move. Game's not perfect, but my game definitely has problems. Let's just take a look at that two-player mode. As I said before, in two-player competitive mode, you each have separate lives. On Super Nintendo, you both start out with five lives. Seems fine. On Sega, you each start out with only three lives. What? Why? This game's hard enough. We don't need fewer lives, too. Yeah, okay, that is a little rough. But my game still has the biggest flaw. Loading. On Super Nintendo, whenever you go from one room to another, you see this. Hold on! Every stage. Hold on! Every room. Hold on! When you start a level. Hold on! And remember how I said this game has secrets and you want to explore? 
Well, this terrible loading definitely makes you not want to do any of that. At all. And how's that loading in Sega? How many times do you see, hold on, never. There is no loading in the Sega game. It's so much faster. Gotta love that blast processing. Hold on. Hold on, hold on. I keep hearing that Wilson Phillips song every time it pops up. Hmm, funny you mention that, cause uh... Deleted scene? There's a lot of other reasons my gameplay is worse. Remember how the Super Nintendo game is cropped? This can affect gameplay. On Sega, when I jump here, I can see a secret area. Cool. On Super Nintendo, I can't see anything. No way of knowing there's anything there. Do they really expect people to just walk around shooting their grappling hook every few steps? And remember how the Super Nintendo game has more objects in the foreground? Well, you know what that does? Blocks your view. Sometimes you can't see what's going on. That's especially fun when you're trying to fight someone. Again, it's not a problem on the Sega game. Those are just tiny differences. I can go smaller. Both games only have two enemies on the screen at a time. The Sega game handles this by showing you both life bars at the same time. Two life bars because there are two villains. Makes sense. On Super Nintendo, it's not as clear. In one player mode, the life bar always goes under your character's life. So if there are two enemies, the life bars just swap. You never see two life bars at once. Doesn't sound like a big deal, but when you've been fighting a bunch of enemies in a row, it's nice to know if there are one or two nearby. It's obvious on Sega, not so much on Super Nintendo. Yeah, 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 but these are all tiny details. Okay, let's go back to a bigger one, the versus mode. Remember in verse mode how you can be many characters from the game? On Sega, you can even play as Two-Face. How cool is that? On Super Nintendo, uh, you can't. Only generic villains on Super Nintendo. Yay. My gameplay is definitely worse. For having worse controls, loading between every room, not being able to see everything, unknown numbers of enemies, and no Two-Face in Versus mode, worst gameplay goes to... Super Nintendo! Both games are bad, but one is worse. And that is Batman Forever for the Super Nintendo. It might have slightly better graphics and presentation, but it's not really anything to brag about. It has worse sound with no music in any of the training modes and no voiceovers. It has worse gameplay with poor controls, not being able to see as much, confusion with the numbers of enemies, no Two-Face in Versus mode, and the horrible, horrible loading time. Honestly, they're both bad games, but it's really the loading time that makes the Super Nintendo game worse. It's bad enough you have to play a bad game, but when you have to wait between every room to play a bad game, then that is definitely the worst game. Worst Batman Forever goes to... Super Nintendo! More deleted scenes? Oh, hells yeah. No one can stop us now! <laughs> I can. There he is! Shoot him! Time to die, man! Let's do this. Ooh. That's funny looking. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Is it the nipples? Is it is it too much? I mean, bats have nipples. They're mammals. It's how they feed their young. Oh, no, no, no. I don't think it's too much, but I'm having a weird craving for milk. <laughs> Screw you guys. I'm going home. I'm going to have Alfred, I mean, somebody paint these black, and then they'll tuck me in. Oh. supposed to be <sighs> This guy's nuts. Let's get out of here.
<sighs> Thanks for checking out our latest video. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Check us out on Patreon for earlier releases and bonus content. Special thanks to Xavier the Lycan for his donation of the games. And thanks to everyone who suggested Batman Forever. Keep those suggestions coming, we will get to them. Also, check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for more Console Wars goodness. Later! Forget a ball! Forget a ball! And he just turns into one guttural sound. Forget a ball! You know what I won't forget about though? Dirt! <laughs> 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 <laughs>